All right, let's see. Uh, back to school. Should schools reopen? Should schools reopen? What would be your answer to that? Well, my answer to that is, I don't know. That should be up to the school and the parents. Indeed, the reason we have this question is because we have government schools. We have so-called public education, really government education. And therefore, politicians make these decisions. But this shouldn't be a decision politicians make any more than politicians should decide which businesses should open or which not. And I know they do make those decisions, but they shouldn't. I'm anti-lockdowns. Certainly long lockdowns, indefinite lockdowns, and broad lockdowns. I mean, it's one thing to lock down a small area where there's an emergency for a short period of time, and then it's over. But any lockdowns, like the lockdowns that we're seeing all over the country and have seen, a, a moral, a, a, you know, a, 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 a violation of the government's responsibility to protect individual rights. It's a massive violation of rights. And schools should be the same. That is, schools should decide based on what's going on in their neighborhood, based on what the parents want. If schools, uh, some schools would reopen, some schools might close. I, I suspect most schools would reopen because most parents want the school to reopen. The risk of COVID to children is minimal. It's not zero. Let's be clear. It's not zero. But the flu is actually riskier to children than is COVID. More children die of the flu than die of COVID. We don't shut down the schools because of the flu. Now, the other flip side of that is that once the child has it, they can infect adults and Older adults do die at a much, 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 much higher rate than the flu. So uh, mortality from COVID is quite high when you get to significant ages, above 70. Uh, the percentage of people who get infected with COVID who die is, 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 is ridiculously high. But that's not a school problem. If there are teachers that are older, they should not teach. They should isolate themselves. If, uh, if parents are older, then the parents need to find a solution to that. Maybe not send their kids to school or maybe find a way to test more often, to isolate themselves. But generally, the solution to COVID has always been the same. And I've been saying this since February. The solution to COVID is to isolate the vulnerable. Do everything you can to isolate old people and people with debilitating diseases that, are, that make it, them very vulnerable to COVID. It might turn out that that's a significant number of people. Whatever. Isolate them. Cocoon them to the extent possible. You won't be able to do it completely. Some people will die. We have to accept that disease causes death. That's part of reality. That is just a fact. Denying reality won't save anybody. You got to cocoon and protect the vulnerable. And then you got to test, you got to trace, you got to isolate. And generally, you got to leave people alone, particularly young people. You got to leave people alone, let them live their lives. Mostly, young people are the productive people in a society. The economy won't take a hit if you take out 65 year olds and over. And that should have been the solution from day one. Trump completely blew it in the beginning. And then state governors blew it from there. And in general, the response to COVID by the American government has been pathetic. Among the worst in the world. And it doesn't seem like people are learning the right lessons. People, the lessons of people oh, are learning, are, oh, we should, have, um, we should have locked down earlier. No. We should have done what you're supposed to do in a pandemic, what the CDC advised to do in a pandemic, what every epidemiologist early on advised needed to be done. Test, trace, isolate, and generally cocoon the elderly and the sick. That's it. Now, 
Would you still have dead people? Yes. Less than we have, a lot less. And even less than Sweden has. Sweden per capita has slightly more than the United States. But Sweden's economy is doing dramatically better than the United States. Dramatically better than the UK. And it didn't lock down. So should schools open? Yeah, they should open. But they shouldn't be government schools so that schools can make those decisions independently as private schools and you can decide whether to send your kid or not to send your kid. Sweden, by the way, never shut down the schools up till, I can't remember what grade, I think seven or eight grade. All schools stayed open because kids don't get sick typically from COVID. Mortality is less than the flu. So why, are we, why, are we, why did we ever close the, the schools? Why did we ever do lockdowns? Why are we still doing lockdowns? Our whole responses, whole responses has been insane. I mean, uh, and I've said, just the response to COVID should be justification not to vote for Trump. A failure on this scale by the federal government should justify not voting for whoever's president, no matter who the alternative is. I've said this many times. People have to suffer the consequences of their failures politically. If you let them get away with their failures on an ongoing basis. Okay. By the way, there's been a bunch of articles um, uh, about the complete failure of COVID in the UK and in the United States. There's cover story in Time Magazine, of the Atlantic Magazine, Wall Street Journal, lengthy article. So they're finally documenting in great detail the failure of this administration and, and the, and the, and the um, uh, governors to actually deal with COVID appropriately. And, and they recognize that the scientists always had the, the, uh, the plan. The CDC had a plan on how to deal with the pandemic. Just the execution was so pathetic by the government, both here and in Europe. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages, and to the role of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want, to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes but uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at youronbrookshow.com slash support, or on Patreon, or Subscribestar, or Locals, uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value, hopefully, you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. 